inside. And then you can do loads. Yeah, I mean, people do say, can I put the tablet up there? They live in a city and it's just, um, it's not really suitable. You need, you know, a good clean wind to, to put up the tablet. Makes sense, yeah. Um, yeah, any other questions? Yeah, what is the average cost of producing one? The cost? Yeah. It depends a lot on um, how much stuff you can find out skips or um, recycled. But generally, the, the cost of this one is about four to five hundred pounds, I think, including all the um, all the electrical bits and bobs, which are quite difficult to find out skips. So the most expensive bits, the magnets, because they're really strong and they have to be bought. But there's a supplier in Sheffield actually, we get our magnets from up here. Um, they cost about three pounds a magnet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 24. Do you have to replace them? Magnets? Yeah. Not all the set in resin, no. Um, over time, they will wear out, but we've had quite a few discussions about where magnetism goes, if it does go. Um, <laughs> but for all purposes, we're going to say that it lasts forever. <laughs> yeah. That outlast your bearing in the tower. That outlast everything else. So you these blades were here today. The, the blades could do the being recarved after 10 years. Um, or, or certainly tarted up on the leading edge. Because it will just physically erode because all the air molecules hitting that front edge. But yeah, with the, with the design, um, it's all part replaceable. So if one thing breaks, you just fix another, like replace that part. If a brake breaks, you can replace it. Replace a blade. That's why we, we uh, quite early on we th we thought we were going to go into just building them for people and like selling wind turbines, but it's a much better idea to teach people how to build them for themselves because then if it breaks, they can fix it and we don't have to go out there. Um, so as long as someone's around to look after them, they'll last for as long as you know as long as the person's around for. Them. On the cost issue, um, it's it's often spent as more if not more on, on the tower um, and set the installation to get it somewhere with good clean wind um, like above and nearby structures. So it costs five hundred pounds for the bit at the top and some batteries, but you know, if, you, if you're putting up a twelve meter tower, that's a lot of steel and a lot of turnbuckles and guy ropes and stuff, which all that stuff in terms of cost. When you say it costs like four or five hundred pounds, including all the electrical bits and bobs, does that mean? Just the stuff that's kind of mounted on there, like on the back, or does that include like a charge controller, like dump load and batteries and all that kind of stuff? I think for all the batteries and stuff, it probably costs a bit more. Because like, you'd need 400 amp hours of batteries for the seven, and if you bought them new, that could cost up to like three or four hundred pounds. Um, so. so all together about 800, 900 for a complete system. Yeah, for a complete system. Yeah, if you're storing the batteries, I guess for two point four, you might yeah guesstimate the cost to four hundred for the turbine. Um, if you're buying steel from new, then you can usually spend the same again on the tower. Mm -hmm. Then if that you're also the lucky system. Um, yeah, I reckon that you'd be looking at over a grand for a full tower turbine and electrical system, mm -hmm. um, and that wouldn't be like. Obsessive. Can you just use standard um, scaffolding poles for the tower? Unfortunately, for this one, for the smaller turbines, you can. Yeah. And we we have for this one, but for for, for like temporary um, events. But for bigger, for longer term installations, you need thicker, thicker tube. I think it's 70 mil, quite thick steel tube. Yeah. So any planning restrictions? Like, you know, do you have to bag bag to wrap the wind turbine and back out and sort of thing? You probably do, yeah. <coughs> well, you do, you definitely do. Yeah, it's completely regionally specific oh. there, so there are actually some places where you don't now. Oh, right. um, but, and it's, they're, they're certainly going around, and they, for example, recently removed planning permission for solar panels in a huge, <laughs> great space of the country. But, um, cool. For turbines, there's another thing about them that makes it a bit easier to sort of dip under the radar in terms of the planning, that they can be technically temporary structures mm -hmm. if they're on, on guy ropes. If yeah. you're not, I mean, if, you, if you're mounting your tower with concrete, Foundations is obviously quite hard to argue that it's temporary, but um, yeah, if it, if it can be removed at sort of quick notice, you 
kind of coming to a different plant mm-hmm. Also, if your land is agricultural land, it's a lot easier. Right. Uh, and if it's below 15 metres, which mm-hmm. is probably going to be, uh, then it's quite easy to, to deem it part of your farm infrastructure and you're going to have to pay, cool. uh, apply for anything. We're in planning application process for putting land in a school in at the moment, so watch this space. Um, very last thing, Hugh Piggott, who designed it, um, absolute legend. He sells the plans on, on the internet for like eleven pounds. He's not really trying to make that much money out of it. He, he makes enough for a living, but he, he doesn't really want to get rich. Um, his idea of sharing uh, design, sharing technology, is, is really interesting. It's what's inspired us a lot. Um, like open source technology basically so there aren't any patents on it but he's really happy for anyone to use his design and develop his design and then give it back to the wider community um, is, is something that yeah a lot of our political ideals are now talking about something that fits into that um, yeah open source design I think that's about it unless anyone else wants to put a few so we'll get to it I reckon we need about three Three or four people getting the last bit of wood to size. That one's to size now, isn't it? Yeah. So um, the this template needs to be put on it and um, drawn across, and then it needs to be cut. Um, is it worth using the bandsaw again, or is it too much too much effort? It's best to uh, hand saw. Definitely use a bandsaw. Okay. Um, so maybe two or three people getting that one, drawing the line on it. Um, and then this one's being planed down? Yeah, plane the flat surface and then we'll mark out those six stations I talked about and then put the dimensions onto it. Yeah. So yeah, we'll get that by stuff in there. That's a, a couple more people. Should we split into three groups then per blade, for each blade? Yeah. Um, which if we've got one, two, three, six, twelve, so four per blade. Yeah. Um, so could maybe the latest arrivals who haven't used the sander yet could start on the final, the latest. Yeah. With you. Yeah. 